Hello guys, welcome to Bhavna's Online Academy. So in this video, we are going to learn the topic of audit program. So audit program is a topic from chapter number two of audit. In case if you want to see other topics from chapter number two or other audit videos, I'll link the playlist in the i button as well as in the description box below. So do check it out. Now I'll explain you what is the audit program in simple words first. Okay. So what happens is that whenever you are performing an audit, you will divide the audit components. You will usually do division of work. You will always follow a concept of division of work. What does the concept of division of work means? That is all the components one person cannot audit. Okay. So this components A will or uh, A will audit. These components B will audit. These components C will audit. Like that, you will do division of work between the audit team. So one one audit team member will you know. Uh, do a set of components or audit a set of components, okay? And these set of components should be completed in this much time. First set, uh, whatever A is auditing should be completed within uh, one month. B's components must be completed in fifteen days. C's components must be completed in twenty days. So like this, this is how you actually you know work in a uh, audit. Okay, you do division of work and also tell them at what time you have to complete and everything. So. If this all, if all of this has to, you know, function smoothly, if everybody has to know what is the work assigned to them, or at what time they have to complete the assigned work, what are the audit procedures they have to, you know, take into account, or how, what and all audit procedures they have to perform, how will these audit uh, members know? How will these audit members know? So the partner. So the partner of the audit will, you know, uh, tell them if. But if what will happen if it is someone like us, and if the partners just tell you orally that see you have to complete operating expenses when you are when you are doing operating expenses, check what and all agreements are there, and uh, if there is any amount uh, above materiality, check it properly. If you are checking sales, see the invoices, check with the bank accounts, and check the agreements. And then if you are uh, checking for, you know. uh investments check in what and all companies they have made investments why they have made investments like that if it orally if all the part if the partner tells you what and all you have to do in an audit or what and all procedures you have to perform will you remember will you be able to remember yes or no will you be able to remember whatever a partner tells you orally what are the audit procedures you have to perform what are the evidences you have to collect you will not be able to remember okay that is very simple that you will not be able to remember this so that's why they came up with something known as a audit program so that's why they came up with something known as a audit program so now what is audit program audit program is nothing but a return okay first it is return it is not oral that you would have understood so what they tell you in audit program is that they will in audit program the partner or anybody who is who has to guide you is going to write all the procedures that you have to perform in relation to the components you are auditing all the procedures that you have to perform in the components you are auditing okay so this is what is audit program is in simple terms okay i hope you would have understood this one minute okay yes uh so audit program okay so what is an audit program mean so an audit program consists of a series of verification procedures to be applied on the financial statement so this is the definition so here what they tell you is that the audit program are so this audit program it consists of a series of verification procedures so what and all procedures you have to or what and all audit procedures you have to follow okay all those audit procedures will be written in this audit program okay series means a number of audit procedures will be written why they have written that because you have to apply that on your financial statements that is whenever you are auditing your financial statements or any component of a financial statement at that time you have to apply these verification procedures suppose if you are auditing a, like a component of suppose sales then you have to uh, you know apply all the audit procedures that are written in the audit program 
okay audit program in simple terms is nothing but a set of instructions which is given to a article or a associate or any member of the audit team that if in case if you are auditing this component you have to audit in this way in this manner these areas you have to cover this much must be the coverage this much must be the extent nature all of that okay to be applied to the financial statements and accounts of a given company for the purpose of obtaining sufficient evidence for the uh, purpose of obtaining sufficient evidence now what does evidence means can someone tell me what does obtaining sufficient evidence means here so what is uh, okay fine first i'll complete the definition and then i'll tell you what the sufficient evidence means okay fine it is accounts of a given company for the purpose of obtaining sufficient evidence to enable the auditor to express an informed uh, opinion okay so whenever a auditor has to express okay i'll tell you at a practical level so whenever a auditor has to express opinion before that we all perform the audit suppose we'll take the example of sales itself okay so once we take up sales if someone is auditing or the component of sales what you are going to do is you are going to apply all the verification procedures on this or all the audit procedures on this and after you know applying all these audit procedures what will happen is that you will uh, obtain a sufficient evidence whether that this or whether all the sales that you have taken as samples uh, you know whether they are all uh you know not risky or whether any misstatement is not found there or whether any misstatement is found there so all the conclusions that you you know reach for a particular uh, this is on a practical level okay so whatever conclusions that you reach on this sales components that will be your uh, sufficient evidence that means uh, sufficient evidence means how did you reach to the conclusion uh using all the invoices that you had like she told right supporting documents like all the invoices that you had all those are like a evidence to you only okay so they act as evidence so that they can give you a conclusion okay and that will help the auditor to express if suppose i have checked the sales and if i have you know come to a conclusion that sales part is not risky like that i will check each and every component of financial statements so by all of that i'll come to a conclusion that uh whether it is risky or not risky or how is the firm whether the firm's financial statements are good or bad or not prepared properly or whatever it is so according to that the auditor will express his informed opinion okay so now what is evidence that is going that is something we are going to learn in the next upcoming chapter so you don't need to worry about that so is audit program clear to you all what does audit program mean any doubts in that is it clear so here what they tell you is the first thing that they tell you is you require different audit programs for different businesses the same audit program you cannot follow for every single business if you are doing audit for amazon how you are going to check its components are going to be way different whereas how you are going to audit a jewelry or how are you going to audit a pet shop is going to be completely different okay so the procedures or the verification procedures or the those series are going to be different so you need different programs for different businesses first point is very simple second point they tell you that see audit program is prepared by a partner at a partner level or at a manager level okay but all the team members or all the audit members or all the members of the audit team who are working must always have an open mind that means audit team members should not blindly follow the audit program that has been given to them they should not blindly follow and uh, whatever is given to them they must have an open mind that means in case whenever they are performing the audit if they think that these audit procedures should also be included or these audit procedures are not needed so it, it can be their own opinion also if they think that's the best thing to do at that point that they can also you know uh, you know uh, talk have a discussion with the other members of the audit team and follow that procedure also that is open uh, that is keeping an open mind next is periodic uh, review so any so whatever it is whether it is a strategy plan or program you always need to periodically review it okay that means now what happened was you started with the you started the audit with the audit program as and when you were going on with the audit suddenly you found out a lot of misstatements so at this point you need to also change your verification procedures you need to add a lot more stronger verification procedures which will give you a uh you know stronger conclusions okay so you have to do periodic uh, review also then next part is points to keep in mind while constructing an audit program 
So whenever you make an audit program, these are the few following things that you have to keep in mind. First thing that you have to keep in mind is whenever you make a program, you should stay within your scope and limitations of the assignment. Scope means the areas that you have to cover in an assignment regarding that alone. If you make an audit plan, it is enough. Limitation means you, if for one component, if you are making 15 to 20 audit procedures that they have to perform, how are they going to do it? You have a limitation of time, money, and the value that you have to provide also, right? So keeping all that in mind only you have to, you know, construct an audit program. Then they tell you that determines, determine the evidence reasonably available. So first see what and all evidence are reasonably, reasonably available, okay? And identify the best evidence for deriving the necessary satisfaction. And what kind of evidence if you collect for a component, Will you get the satisfaction that also you have to see first, it must be easily available or reasonably available also, you must not have to put a lot of hard work. And also that audit evidence must give you a sense of satisfaction also that yes, this component for this component, if I've got what is component here, purchase, sale, income, expense, anything it may be. For this component, if I've got this evidence, you must have a satisfaction that yes, there cannot be any other risk involved. Okay, then. So like that, you have to, uh, you know, construct your audit program. Then you have to apply only those steps and procedures which are useful in accomplishing the verification purpose in that specific situation. Okay. In that, if there is a situation, okay, in that, if you are going to, uh, you know, tell the uh, article to do a hundreds and thousands of steps and procedures, if the article is going to perform one or two procedures itself, it is enough to verify the particular component. But no, no, you are like, no, 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 we are the best audit firm. We have to do a lot of procedures so that we can prove to the client that we have done a good work. So like that and all, if you think then the audit cannot never get over. So apply only those steps and procedures which are useful for the audit, uh, for the verification purpose and not more than that. In that specific situation, whatever is needed, do that. Then consider all possibilities of error so where and all error can be there according to that you have to design your audit program okay then coordinate the procedures to be applied to the related items so whatever uh, related items uh, related items are there on that also what and all uh, procedures can you you know perform that also you have to coordinate and see okay so five points you have to uh, keep in mind while constructing an audit program what is the, sc the scope and limitation that you have what is the best evidence that you can collect which will give you satisfaction? What are necessary steps and procedures alone you have to include? You have to see all the possibilities of errors and keeping that in mind, you have to prepare audit program. And then the procedures, okay, you have to coordinate to, uh, which can be applied to related items also. Suppose if you're doing a procedure for depreciation that can also be you know, taken for uh, plant property and equipment. Or for, you know, when you're doing the audit of machinery. So like that for related items, whatever procedures are there, that and all also you have to coordinate, okay? The depreciation can be taken along with PPA. So like that, okay? Next, next uh, topic is, now you have to, now you have seen what are the points that to keep in mind when constructing audit program. Now you are going to see how are you going to construct an audit program? That is how are you going to develop the audit program? Okay, first they tell you that whatever audit program you have, it must be in a return form. That is the number one. Okay, second one is that they tell you that uh, the audit, what the audit program should contain the audit objectives for each area. That each area, what is the aim? Why are you auditing it? What is the goal of auditing that area? If you're auditing sales, why are you auditing sales? If you're auditing purchase, why are you auditing purchase? If you're auditing... Uh, you know, assets, why are you auditing that? So all the goals and objectives of auditing, uh, auditing each area, that also you must write in the audit program. Then you must also have sufficient details which will serve as a set of instruction to the assistants. Okay, that means you also need to tell them all the instructions related to how you are going to perform the audit related to a particular component. So all those instructions also sufficiently that are needed that must be there in the audit program. Okay, so then a proper execution of work can happen. Then, then third point is reliance on internal controls. 
So here, what they tell you is, when you develop a audit program, you have to also see how much are you going to rely on internal controls. Okay. So if you wish to rely on internal controls, then according to that, you can decide your nature, timing, and extent of audit procedures. Because if you rely more on uh, internal control, and if you think the internal control are very good, then you will perform less audit procedures. If the internal control is bad, you will perform more audit procedures. So what is the reliance are you going to take on those internal controls? You have to see. Okay, see here the auditor may decide. The auditor can also decide that he will not rely on uh, that he will not rely on these internal controls. So if he decides so, then you have to see what are the other ways that you can you know obtain sufficient and audit evidence by. What are the other procedures that you can perform and get your sufficient and audit evidence, sufficient and appropriate audit evidence? Okay, then. Uh, then you have to also you know when you are developing a audit program, you have to. You know, keep the timings of performance also in mind. Okay, so usually, at how much time you have to perform audit? Usually, auditor is very flexible to decide that. Okay, it depends on an auditor at what time he has to, you know, uh, start at what time he has to end all of that. However, what he says is, in some cases alone. The auditor may have no discretion as to timing. In some cases alone, you might not have a, uh, you might not have a place to say. Because if then suppose if you have to verify cash balances, you have to do that at the year end only. If you have to verify inventory stock, you have to do that at year end only. For that end on, you cannot use your own flexibility and do. Maybe for some other procedure for data scratches and all, you can do at year middle also. Then again at year end also. That there and on, you can use your flexibility in timings. But there may be some cases where you cannot use your flexibility in timings. So according to that, you have to prepare your audit program. Then audit planning. So the audit planning ideally commences at the conclusion of previous year audit, and if there is any modification in the audit plan, also you can consider that while you are preparing your audit program. So what are the five things uh, that will help you to develop the audit program? First, it must be return audit program. Second one, it must have the objective why we are auditing each area or the goal why we are auditing each area, and what and the set of instructions should also be there. The third thing is how much are you going to rely on internal controls? Also, you have to keep in mind while while you are developing the audit program. Fourth thing is that you must also see regarding the timings whether you can be flexible or there are some areas where you cannot be flexible. So according to that, you have to make a audit program. Fifth one audit audit planning. You all know that previous years audit whenever it gets over at that time itself for next year's audit or for the current year's audit. You start your audit planning. So, in case if there is any modification as the audit progresses in the audit plan, uh, uh, keep according to that in your audit program also there will be a few changes. Okay, so developing of audit program also we have covered. Next topic is uh, designed to provide audit evidence. So, why do you make an audit program so that you can you know get audit evidences? I already told you at the first this. Then final topic is advantages and disadvantages of audit program. What are the advantages and disadvantages of audit program? This is very very simple. This I'll not explain. I'll just read through it. Okay. First is it is going to be a assist. It is going to assist you while you are going to do the audit because it is going to give you a clear set of instructions. Now suppose if you are a first year article and if you don't know what to do, audit program is going to be your assistant like your Siri. It will tell you how to perform and what to perform. Okay. Then if there are any other major audits, it will give you a total perspective on how the work has to be performed because each one's components will be, you know, division of work will be there. At what time you have to com complete each component will be given. Who will perform what component? At what extent are they going to perform? How many audit procedures they are going to perform? So all that will be there in the audit uh, program. So if there is any major audit, it will be helpful. Then it will also be helpful in the selection of assistant or selection of uh, resources, okay? Because uh, if the audit program uh, is telling you that uh, you will require a lot of uh, human resource or a lot of man force, then according to that you will uh, you know uh, take the manpower uh, this thing, okay? Then uh, without a return and predetermined program. 
overlooking certain books and records so here what they are telling is that if you don't have a return or a predetermined program what will happen is if there is a there or can there always be a situation where you can overlook a few books and records okay suppose what may happen i am a first year article they told me to perform three audit procedures i only remember two audit procedures they told and i only know how to do one audit procedures so at the end if out of the three only one i am performing then in such case uh, there might be a danger which can be posed to the audit firm okay so what it tell you is if there is a audit program which is properly framed such danger can be significantly less and audit can be proceeded systematically okay then what they tell you is in our firm also we have a system that if each of a uh, component we are completing we have to put our sign on that component okay we have to put our signature on that component why we have to put a so now is it okay shall we start okay so what was i telling you that we put a sign off we call it as a sign off on all the uh, you know sorry what is this happening okay so we put a sign off on each uh, area we audit if suppose i have audited operating expenses i put that bhavna ji is the preparer of this and i will put a sign off there so what will happen is that in case if i have not done that work properly it can be traced back to me that they can pinpoint me and tell me that you have done it wrongly so it becomes easier for the person who is at the top level or the who is managing the audit team that they can you know uh, see how what responsibility one person has taken up and carried okay so that will help them in uh, keeping a control uh, that's what next point is that only principal can control the progress of various audits if they have the audit program in the audit program they they have written that if these five points are completed that means we have completed our stage 1 or stage 2 okay and if in in actual also if these five points have been completed then that uh, you know principal will know or the partner will know that yes so our stage 1 or stage 2 has been completed so that check they can have okay next so it is a guide for audits to be carried out in the succeeding year in the next year if you are going to perform any audit this audit program you can use that time also okay to perform those audits also okay then audit program serves as evidence in the event of charge of negligence being brought against the auditor if there is the if the company is telling that see this auditor did not perform the audit properly itself what work has he done he has done nothing like that and all if goes on saying the auditor has a weapon in his hand that weapon is your audit program so if he has audit program in his hand that means that he can show that as a evidence to that company on his face that see this is the program we have prepared and this is how we have uh, you know uh, gone this is how we have done our audit this is how much we have covered this is how we have covered this is the time we took this is the extent we did so all this what uh, whatever he has done he has done it with reasonable skill and care only he can establish there so this is how these are the advantages of audit program uh, disadvantages so disadvantages what is the disadvantage the works become very mechanical you don't apply your own brain at all because see whatever they have told you are going to do what is your own creativity in that nothing right and uh, it, so there may be since they have told you that this 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 you have to perform you will perform it without any understanding of the object itself okay you will not understand why they have told to perform a particular procedures and you will just perform okay so this and now you will understand when you come to a practical world more okay then the audit program often tends to be rigid and inflexible so in real time scenarios what happens it is that it becomes very rigid and inflexible that if you have to do this you have to do this i don't care how much time it takes or you are not able to get the information or whatever it may be okay it will be rigid and flexible oh it's rigid and inflexible okay so uh, then see uh then insufficient assistance may take shelter behind the uh, inefficient assistance may take shelter behind the program let's see only this much instruction you gave uh for these and all you did not give us any instructions so we did not do that so if there are any deficiencies which are found assistants will directly blame it on the audit program itself see the audit program did not specify so we did not do so then finally hard and fast audit program may kill the initiative of efficient and en enterprising assistants that people who are very you know 
promising people who can do a lot better work than actually what was written in the audit program itself they will not be able to do that because if the audit the audit program will be very hard and fast or it will be very rigid and inflexible okay so these are the disadvantages and this is the chart of audit programs so yes guys we have come towards the end of the video hope you found this video helpful if you did please do like share and also subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click on the notification icon so you get notified every time i post a new video thank you